All right, girl, today we're gonna sip some hibiscus tea sangria before we talk about this book. And I'm not trying to do that like in a shady way or nothing like that. <laughs> I just wanted to drink that tea because it was free. Please stand your ground, hit my radar via Musical Tati's channel, which I'll send a link to you guys down below that you can click on there because I love Musical Tati. Go, Musical Tati. Go, just go, girl. But anyway, because I'm giving y'all too much right now, uh, she put this book on my radar, and it just so happens that a couple of days after I saw her present this book in one of her wrap-ups, I was over at my mother's house. The book was actually sitting there right on the futon. My mother was in the middle of reading it. She was enjoying it and loving it, and I guess a bit saddened by it. And of course, I said, well, once you're done reading the book, you know, can I borrow it? And she was like, cool, go ahead, because you're going to love it. And I was like, okay, yeah, girl, I'm, I'm ready. So after sort of gathering the response of Musica Tati as well as my mother's, and, you know, along with various people who read the book and expressed their opinion or their response to the book online, I went into the book feeling that maybe it was, you know, maybe this isn't the, isn't the right term, but maybe it was, a, it was loaded material or controversial or maybe even provocative. Um, however, when I actually finished reading the book, you know, my, my feelings of it was a lot more gentler than that because I think that at the end of the day, the book was simply just the author's response to this current dilemma that we, you know, are, are facing right now in our nation. Now, if you're wondering what the dilemma is that I'm sort of vaguely speaking about, um, you know, really, you know, I, I've tried, when I went into making this video, I decided that I just want to just focus on staying the ground, focus on the book. I just want to share a little bit of it that I have, have as a response and just go from there. But if you're familiar with the phrase that's currently sweeping our nation of hashtag Black Lives Matters, then this book is essentially the author's response to that. And she does it in a way where she tells her response or it gives her expression of the whole the whole subject matter through the eyes of two different women but as it regards stand your ground the book is told through three different narratives um if i give away the third one then it'll spoil the entire book so we're not going to talk about that so that first narrative is told through the perspective of a black woman or african -American, american woman named janice johnson at the opening of the novel, or well, she opens up the novel, her narrative, but at the opening of the novel, her and her husband, they're sort of in the bedroom lounging about, uh, sort of uh, waging their different ways of, uh, you know, giving disciplinary actions toward their son, who has an incident um, in school, which led him, you know, of course, to be in trouble with them and as well as the school. I feel like I don't need to give that part away. But in any regard, the two cu the couple, they are alone. Um, they allowed their son to go to the library with his girlfriend. And, you know, they didn't expect something that's going to happen to them that completely tears their lives apart. Um, as the story progresses, or actually as that first chapter progresses, you know, they get a knock from the police officers that are at their door. And they open the door only to find out that their son has been shot and murdered by a white male in a neighborhood. You know, I think it was probably more of a... Um, predominantly white neighborhood that was you know economically speaking had a lot more than them I want to say but you know I have to actually have the book in front of me to speak specifically and clearly on that but in any regard the actual shooter is claiming that he was standing his ground against Janice Johnson's teenage son I won't give away the details of it but you'll have to read the book to know and girl it is a hot ass mess how he was trying to play that kid Ooh, a hot mess, girl, a hot mess, but I won't give that away. Now, the second narrative is actually told through the perspective of the shooter's wife, and her name is Meredith Spencer. Now, Meredith is a key witness to the whole incident, you know. She, of course, is dealing with her own battle with guilt and anxiety and you can even say depression at the fact that she knows the truth behind what happened between Janice Johnson's son as well as her husband. The issue is that, you know, should Meredith speak, speak her truth, will she be destroying her family, you know, putting them in jeopardy and having it crumble and falling over a cliff before her? Or is it better for her to reserve her secrets and to hold them in just to keep her family together? Because the interesting thing about Meredith is that before she married her husband, she was sort of you know I, I won't say she was poor but she was sort of just living this life as a waitress you know struggling to make ends meet but you know her husband pulled her out of that so of course after the two women's you know their uh, initial uh, uh, confrontations with the subject matter that they're you know the dilemma that they're put through the scenarios 
after their initial response to those uh, issues, the story then gradually moves more into the actual uh, court case between, you know, the detectives who built the case against Meredith Spencer's um, husband. That court case is where the majority of the suspense and the tension sort of lies within the book, at least I found so. Um, and, and that's because as a reader, you're wondering, you know, with all that these two women are going through, with the detectives building their case, with Meredith Spencer's husband building his case, you know, who exactly is going to win? So you spend that time wondering, will justice be sought for um, Janice Johnson's uh, family? Or with Meredith Spencer, or more specifically, will her husband get away with the stand your ground plea? But of course, even as that court case is playing out, and it, it was suspenseful to know, you know, exactly who was going to get away with this. And me, personally, I kind of knew what was going to happen, because um, it should have, you know, okay, I, I won't give anything away, because I was going to give too much away. But like I was saying, even with that whole ordeal with the court case playing out, I did really like um, that, you know, Miss Murray, she sort of took the two women and drew the parallels between the two. Um, I mean parallels as it concerns their different roles besides being women. You know, they were mothers. Um, Janice Johnson lost her son. Meredith Spencer was raising one. They were wives. Meredith Spencer was trying to protect her husband even though, you know, he probably wasn't the, <laughs> the you know, the most attentive or even, I will give away too much if I speak about that, but like I said, Meredith Spencer was dealing with, you know, being, you know, honorable and protective of her husband. Whereas Janis Johnson's husband was actually trying to get her to take some more further extreme measures to sort of combat the whole legal system that was, you know, essentially trying to sweep his son's murder under the rug. So in turn, with the two women facing these sort of oppositions of each of their characters, certain secrets start to come into light, you know, that questions their character. And then those questions in, in, of their character comes forward into the actual court case. So, you know, Janice Johnson is getting on the stand and Meredith Spencer is encouraged to get on the stand. Um, and then as always, the legal team, the, you know, the, the attorneys, the lawyers, the jury, they're all going to just throw whatever they can at these two women. So those were the parts that I absolutely loved about the book. And I think Miss Murray did very well for me to keep me reading. And just to sum it back up, um, I loved how she built the suspense with the court case, who's going to win, who's not as well as how she delved into the parallels between these two women. I want to speak some more on it, but I feel like if I keep talking, I'll just give too much a damn way. So resoundingly, as I said, Stand Your Ground is Murray's way into uh, gathering or presenting her expression and her response to, you know, just to keep it simple, girl, the hashtag uh, Black Lives Matter um, dilemma of the phrase. Um, you know, the context behind that, you know, like I said, it's for another video, but it is her response. And I love how she just, you know, while we will probably never know what the mother of Trayvon Martin went through, as well as Mike Brown, you know, from a, a, a very a more deeper level, um, this is, I think, was a pretty good and necessary piece of material for us to sort of gather what little bit of reflections that we can from women who have been put in these situations. So ultimately, I did think the message of um, Stand Your Ground was very clear, very necessary, very clear. It's the lock going in the key and it's turning and I got it, girl. I'm 100% co-signing this, co this book. Um, while, you know, I don't do the whole recommendation thing, I just, like as far as booktube, I just come on here and talk about what I've read and just share it. I do recommend this book, though. Now, even with all that said, I do have to say that I did have some issues with the book. And really, it didn't have any too much to do with the actual material per se. It was more to me with uh, Murray's writing style. So I just kind of found for a book that look that was so provocative, so emotionally driven in a lot of areas, I didn't absolutely connect so much with um, with that whole you know the the emotions that the book was giving me. And I say that from the perspective of someone who was trying to go into the book for something that was. Even I don't even kind of want to say this, but something that was a little bit more lyrical, I want to say, or uh, had a little bit more uh, finesse when it came to, you know, words and language. Um, to me, the writing, it was a little bit too straightforward for me, you know. It's one thing for, uh, you know, like Janice Johnson dealing with the, you know, the death of her son with the police officers coming in the door. It's for one thing for her to sort of crumble, you know, in the face of that. You know, but as a reader, you know, I kind of was hoping for like 
I can't put it into words, girl. If I had a paintbrush, I could probably get it. But for her to take me as a reader into this cosmic void of prose and poetry, and <laughs> this just, I don't know how to put it into exact words. So underneath that aspect, I did kind of find the writing to be sort of monotone in a way. Um, you know, I just didn't totally grasp the emotions of the book, though, although I gathered them. Girl, you know me and my words. And even adding to that, as it regards to actual characters, it's so funny because in the beginning, I was thinking that I would have found more connection with Janice Johnson, but I actually appreciated and liked it, Meredith Spencer's um, narrative so much more. And that's kind of odd, right? And I think that there's two elements that I want to say that kind of made this whole situation the way I feel. Um, the first one, as it regards Janice Johnson, is that I, I think that I probably would have sort of connected with her story a lot more if I was actually introduced to her son. Her son is not introduced in the novel, you know, from the very, from the get-go, he's already uh, basically murdered. But in contrast, when it concerns Meredith Spencer, I think Murray gave so much attention to Meredith's actual background and, you know, the background is there to be experienced by the actual reader that that is where the connection with me you know having a more having more of an interest in Meredith's point of view actually kind of stapled itself together so you know it, it's really interesting so on one hand I was hoping to hear from you know Janice Johnson's his son and see more of their interactions together I think that would have really sold her for me and then on the flip side I think that I really did connect with Meredith Spencer's narrative or was I wouldn't even say connect but I was a little bit more uh, attentive to Meredith Spencer's narrative because we was actually given her backstory right there on the page front and center all in all I did absolutely enjoy Stand Your Ground um, it you know it was a great book it was very necessary um, and I really do recommend it to anyone and to everyone and as always leave your comments below if you read this book if you haven't if you want to read it if you have any more questions that I can give away details without spoiling the book then please leave your comments down below